Howdy, welcome to the video. So, for one, this is the first time I am sitting down and filming this face to face, face to camera, camera to AI, I don't know. Basically this is potentially going to be the way that some of these videos are going to be going forward. I wanted to try doing something more off the cuff because for a long time now people have been saying that the style of those previous videos that I'd done were maybe a little too robotic and lacked some of the spontaneity and fun of when I talk about movies in person, which the warm reception of that led to me wanting to talk about movies off the internet, plus my love of listening to straight white dudes talk about movies on the internet. Anyway, today I want to talk about Orca. Orca is a bizarre little movie from the mid to late 70s that sprang up in the wake of Jaws and is essentially a ripoff of Jaws. In fact, it's part of Hollywood legend how Dino De Laurentiis, the producer of this film, called up his personal assistant and asked him to find a more terrible and terrifying fish than a great white after having seen a preview screening of Jaws because he knew this was going to be a big deal and he knew that doing something similar would pay off. And it kind of did, just not in terms of reviews. Orca is kind of maligned, and somewhat rightly so, it's far from perfect. There's a lot wrong with it. The writing's kind of bad, some of the acting's kind of cheesy. At one point, I swear, you can see inside the animatronic Orca and see, like, the wooden innards of the thing while it's being speared. There's a lot wrong with it. A lot. And yet, it's a movie that I've watched maybe seven times in the last two years. It's genuinely beautiful in parts, the locations are stunning, Ennio Morricone's slightly derivative, but still, great score is majestic and powerful when it hits home, and there are entire scenes dedicated to the inner workings of the whale pots and their relationships, and a genuinely heartbreaking scene where the male orca, after it has its mate killed by Nolan, tries to push it through the water to keep up with the rest of the pod and repeatedly fails and is slowly left behind by the others. It's genuinely heartbreaking and it makes it vindicating to see the vengeance it enacts on all of the human characters. In terms of the film being a Jaws ripoff, it's absolutely the best of them, even more so than Joe Dante's Piranha, which still has a strong fan base and rightfully so, it's one of the best B-movies of its era. But Orca it kind of shoots to something higher. Director Michael Christensen really tried to make this film separate from Jaws. It doesn't follow in the wake of Cruel Jaws or Mako the Jaws of Death or Piranha or its many sequels or Shark Attack or Shark Attack 3. If you know that movie then you definitely know the one piece of dialogue that I'm thinking of right now. <laughs> Orca presents a much more nuanced take on the idea of man v nature. If we're to be entirely honest with ourselves, and the movie strives to be most of the time, then our protagonist Captain Nolan, played brilliantly by Richard Harris in a really standout performance for a movie that didn't entirely deserve it, is a portrait of a man who is very conflicted. He knows what he's done is wrong, and when we witness the death of the female Orca towards the beginning of the movie, it's clear that he realises that something heinous has taken place aboard his ship, that he's committed an act of sacred violence onto an animal that is much more aligned with our own perception of human intelligence and spirituality. The orca's intelligence may be even superior to man's. They remain loyal to one mate for life. As parents, they are exemplary, better than many human beings, and like human beings, they have a profound instinct for vengeance. Midway through the film, he asks a priest if it's possible to commit a sin against an animal, and the priest's reply is that, yes, it's possible to sin against anything. And this is something that hangs over the movie and hangs over Harris and pushes everyone around him further and further away until he is completely alone and isolated. And this really comes through in the latter half of the movie, after he resigns himself to going out onto the water to try and catch the terrible fish. It's in this latter half that the film really comes into its own. The cinematography is stunning, 
the final chase sequence is really beautiful and we begin to see the frayed edges of a man who's already quite broken really completely come loose. Orcas are incredibly intelligent creatures and the movie goes out of its way to remind us of this. Charlotte Rampling is, I guess this movie's equivalent of Hooper, presents Nolan with the information that both gives him the jumping off point to go on his doomed hunt towards the start of the film, while also reminding him later on that he's essentially brought this on himself. Orcas are incredibly intelligent both intellectually and emotionally. They mourn, they have their own languages, they have regional dialects. And what Nolan does against this creature is truly horrific. And that is emphasized by the film's drawn out birthing scene as the dead female orca is brought aboard Nolan's ship and subsequently gives birth to a dead bloodied fetus right there on the deck. It's genuinely horrific stuff and how Christiansen frames it how it's shot and how Harris reacts when he sees the ramifications of what he's done is truly astounding. This all combined with Ennio Morricone's not quite as great as usual but still very evocative and very beautiful if slightly derivative of Jaws soundtrack really pushes everything home and makes you feel like you're watching if not something that is a perfect alternative to the classic adventure stylings of Spielberg's Jaws. It definitely gives you the idea that there is a unified vision behind this film that is certainly lacking in any of the other Jaws ripoffs. Typically these films are concerned with the idea of man v nature in terms of black and white conflict where a rabid terrifying beast is out to kill, maim and harm humans to the fullest extent it can with nothing but bloodlust and satiating its own hunger on its mind. Here we're given a revenge story from the point of view of an animal who was completely unjustifiably harmed out of nowhere and that's something very interesting and how it's presented makes you wonder about the devastation that we can cause to each other and to nature as a whole and I think how the film handles that and the sombre qualities that it imbues all of the later scenes of the movie with gives it a lot of depth and a lot of character and this combined with the chemistry between Charlotte Rampling and Harris the genuinely great animatronic whale scenes and some of the action towards the latter half really combine to make a film that is both suspenseful and quite original in parts. Can I recommend Orca as a movie? I don't know. It has its ups and downs. In some parts it's beautiful, in others not so much, but it is interesting. Would I say that it's completely not worth your time, especially given that you can find it for free on YouTube right now? Absolutely not. As in, go and watch it. It's cool. And if you're into this kind of thing like I am, this is definitely one of the better movies from this era. And in terms of films that have an ecological sway and a naturist kind of point of view, it's absolutely better than Prophecy, which is still really bad. I know that movie's kind of like got its fans now, but John Frankenheimer was really off with that one. And the end scene in the lake is just really bad. Stephen King really nailed it on the head when he wrote about it and flayed it completely in Dense Macabre. Anyway, I digress. Go watch Orca. Go learn about Orcas. They're really interesting. They have the highest rate of gyrification on the cerebral cortex, I think. I read that in a Wikipedia article. It could be wrong. Anyway, they're very smart, and they also helped humans hunt larger whales back in the 30s. Bet you didn't know that. So yeah, go check out Orca. Check out my other videos if you've not already, and... This is me signing off.